right, so anyway, we are going to do Psalm 69, 70, and maybe 71. I figure in a few weeks we might be through with Psalms, and maybe we can move on to Proverbs. I really like Proverbs also. I'm having a hard time trying to decide which camera to look at, so please forgive my lack of professionalism as I try to get this together tonight. I don't know how good the sound is on this new camera. I have no idea. It's a, it's a depth tech, and I didn't think it was going to work at all. It was actually was pretty easy to set up because I just plugged it into my computer, and it downloaded the program, and it worked pretty easy. It's a plug and play. All right, well, let's pray. Maybe I need to pray over my equipment. Seems like this camera is not in the right place. All right. God, we just come to you, and we just thank you, God. We just uh, praise you for all the many things that you do for us, that you are on your throne, and you are in control. And we just thank you because you are the great Jehovah. You are the great I Am. You are from everlasting to everlasting. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. You are our shelter in the storm. You are our strength and our refuge. You're a mighty and powerful and magnificent God. And you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness according to your truths. But yet, God, you are loving and kind and compassionate in caring. You are trustworthy. You are faithful, God, and you are patient, God. You want none to perish. Thank you for calling us as your children, and thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we just pray that right now you would open our hearts and our minds to what you want to teach us. God, that if there's anyone out there that is not saved, that you would Open their hearts and open their eyes, open their minds, God, and open their ears to the truth and allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. We pray that if there's anyone out there that needs to return to you, God, that needs to repent and have their uh, relationship reconciled, God, that you would draw them to you. And we pray for all the many disasters and many things that are going on right now. It's just so hard to keep up with. I try, but it just, there's something constantly happening. So God, we just pray for these people that are in the middle of these turmoils and these disasters. God, we just pray that if they've lost loved ones, God, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. God, that you would give them healing if they've been injured. God, that you would heal their bodies physically and emotionally. And God, if they have needs that need to be met, that their needs would be met by the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus, God. We just pray for all the other people um, outside of disasters that have lost loved ones, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And we pray for all the people that are sick. I know a few that are sick right now. Some have COVID. Some have other things, God. I just pray for healing for them. And I pray that you would give the family strength. I just pray, God, that you would be with them and that they would feel your presence. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, let's get into reading the Bible. I love reading the Bible. I don't have my study Bible. I didn't bring my study Bible in here. I don't know what I was thinking. This is actually the Bible that I use. I use this Bible for my uh, quiet time in the mornings. But I actually, on Christmas morning, we actually read the birth story of Jesus. So that was kind of special. I haven't done that in a while. I used to do that with my daughter. I think we will read through 71 because uh, 70 is very short. Now I kind of wish I had my study Bible, but I don't, so we'll just wing it on the, on the study notes. We'll just ask the Holy Spirit to share with us what, what we're going to read means. 
Okay, so this is um, Psalm 69. It's David's prayer in distress. Save me, O God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me, being mine enemies, wrongfully are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. O God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those who seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. Because for thy sake I have borne reproach. Shame hath covered my face. I am become a stranger unto my brethren, and an alien unto my mother's children. Oh, I'm sorry, my eye itches. For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. I made sack sackcloth also my garment, and I became a proverb of them, to them. They that sit in the gate speak against me, and I was the song of the drunkards. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time. O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. Deliver me out of the mire, and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me, and out of the deep waters. Let not the water flood overflow me, neither let the deep swallow me up. And let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, and hide not thy face from thy servant, for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily. Draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it. Deliver me because of mine enemies. Thou hast known my reproach and my shame. In my dishonor, mine adversaries are all before thee. Reproach hath broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness, and I looked for some to take pity, but there was none, and for comforters, but I found none. So let's just stop there for a second and talk about what we just read. You know, it seems like David, of course, it says David's prayer in distress. He is in distress. And I think many times we feel like that too. We feel like we are underwater. We are going through so many things at the same time. It just seems like we're in a flood. But God is faithful. And God knows everything that we're going through. There is nothing hidden from him. There is nothing hidden from him that we do, or there's nothing hidden from him that we say. He knows everything. And sometimes we have to go, we have to be in these flood situations to learn, to learn things about life that we need to learn. So that later on, after we get on the other side of whatever we're going through, we can help others and we can encourage others. And so, I don't know how much of an encourager David was. It seems like David was in distress a lot. David had a lot of enemies. David was either crying out to God or not crying out to God. But God said that David was a man after his own heart. So whatever, God, whatever David did or didn't do, God still loves him. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue reading. They gave me also gall for my meat, 
and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Let let their table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. Let their eyes be darkened that they see not, and make their loins continually to shake. Pour out thine indignation upon them, and let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Let their habitation be desolate, and let none dwell in their tents. For they persecute him whom thou hast smitten, and they talk to the grief of those whom they hast, thou hast wounded. Add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living, and not be written with the righteous. But I am poor and sorrowful. Let thy salvation, O God, set me up on high. I will praise the name of God with a song, and will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also, this also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock that hath horns and hoofs. The humble shall see this and be glad, and let your heart and and your heart shall live that seek God. For the Lord heareth the poor and despiseth not his prisoners. Let the heaven and earth praise him and seize in everything that moveth therein. For God will save Zion and will build the cities of Judah that they may dwell there and have it in possession. The seed also of his servants shall inherit it and they that love this name shall dwell therein. So it kind of took a turn there, and he started asking God to uh, pour out revenge upon his uh, enemies. But also, there is something, I really wish I had my study Bible, because this is not much of a study Bible. It does have things in the in the middle, though. Oh, I can't find it. I can't find it. I'm thinking that there is a throwback to Jesus. They gave me also gall for my meat. And in my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. I, I think that may be a throwback to Jesus on the cross, but without my study Bible, I'm just not sure about that. So if I'm wrong about that, then... I'm sorry, I'm wrong about that. But anyway, um, so David was calling on God to punish his enemies, but that's not really the way that God, you know, that's not the way he is. He, sometimes our enemies are God's children too. You know, sometimes our enemies are just in a different place spiritually than we are. And God wants to call them back to him, too. Um, and sometimes it takes time. They have to go through some things. They have to grow spiritually to get where they need to be. So God, you know, God says in his word that vengeance is his. And so he will, he will bring down his wrath upon the unrighteous. So let's move on to uh, Psalm 70. It says, To the chief musician, a psalm of David, to bring to remembrance. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and confounded that seek after my soul. Let them be turned backward and put to confusion that desire my hurt. Let them be turned back to for a reward of their shame and say, Aha, aha. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually, Let God be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O God. Thou art my help and my deliverer. 
O Lord, make no tarrying. So, um, again, you know, a prayer for David to be delivered. But then again, he starts talking about his enemies and what he wants God to do. And then turns it back around. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. And then 71 doesn't really have a heading. So I wonder if it's part of the prayer of deliverance. But they just decided to put 71. I don't know. So let's go ahead and read it. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. Be thou my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For thou art my hope, O Lord God, thou art my trust from my youth. By thee have I been holden up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. I am as a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. For mine enemies speak against me, and they that lay wait for my soul take counsel together, saying, God hath forsaken him. Persecute and take him, for there is none to deliver him. O God, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste for my help. Let them be confounded and consumed that are adversaries to my soul. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor that seek my hurt. But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. My mouth shall show forth thy righteousness in thy salvation all the day, for I know not the numbers thereof. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even of thine only. O God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not, until I have showed my strength unto this generation and thy power to every one that is to come. Thy righteousness also, O God, is very high. Who has done great things, O God, who is like unto thee? Thou which has showed me great and sore troubles, shalt quicken me again and shalt bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. I will also praise thee with the psaltery, even thy truth. O oh my God, unto thee will I sing with the harp, O thou, Holy One of Israel. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee, and my soul which thou hast redeemed. My tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long, for they are confounded. For they are brought unto shame that seek my hurt. So again, King David. King David, his trust was in God. King David was, was opposed by many, many enemies. But he also... He also was a man after God's own heart. He 
he committed a lot of sins, a lot of what we would say are really bad sins. But God forgave him every time. Every time he forgave him. Every time he asked for mercy, God would give him mercy. So that is what built David's trust for God because God had seen him through time after time after time after time. His confidence was in God. His confidence was not in himself. It was in God. That is who his confidence was in. Okay. Well, that concluded what we were going to read. I want to add 71 on here. So don't do it again. My child has joined us. He's making his... I got a scratch my throat noise. All right. Well, I guess what he's watching does not appeal to him. All right, let's do a, we're going to do this salvation message tonight. It's real short. Let's see if this camera is better at picking things up. I'll have to get it closer to... I think I'm going to put my Facebook camera behind this camera. I don't know what I'm going to do. At least I'm kind of centered, but this other camera is flipped around like this is actually the left side of my body. So anyway, alright, we're going to do this. Do you know the ABCs of life? God created you to experience a full life here on earth. John 10.10 10, And He wants you to spend eternity with Him. 2 Peter 3.9 To become a Christian, you simply need to admit you need a Savior. We all, we've all disobeyed God, sinned, and earned separation from God's death. Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23 No matter how good you are or how hard you try, you can't work your way into heaven. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 To believe, believe in Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 Three, commit. Commit your life to Christ. You can believe in your mind that Jesus exists, but to have a relationship with Him, you must ask Him to be your Lord here on earth and your Savior eternally. Romans 10.9 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. So this is a very short prayer. So repeat after me if you want to get saved. Jesus, I have sinned. Thank you for dying for me so I could be forgiven. I trust in you alone for eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, if you said that prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is now being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And um, the angels are rejoicing. So if you want to grow closer, have a closer relationship to God, then read God's Word. This is the Holy Bible. Holy Bible. God's instruction booklet for us. Basic, basic instructions before leaving earth. 
That's what the Bible stands for, basic instructions before leaving earth. We must read it to understand it. Pray to God every day. Open up your heart to Him. Uh, praise Him. Praise Him for the things that He's done. Be thankful. Be grateful. And then um, pray for the problems that you have and pray for others. That's a good place to start. Start working on this relationship. Start in Matthew and read about Jesus. It talks about Jesus being baptized. Pray for God to send you to a church where you can follow Jesus in baptism. And you can fellowship and you can learn and you can praise and worship. All right. Well, I am going to give you God's blessing. Numbers 6, 24 through 26. And I didn't tell you before because I was really frustrated with my camera situation. But my name is Charm, and this is my ministry, Awesome Treasures Ministry. And what I do on here, what God has called me to do, is to share His truth in His Word and to share the gospel. So that's why I shared a gospel message. Those are the things that God has called me to do, to pray for others, to give, be thankful, grateful. Those are the things he's called me to do. So Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Um, the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Peace is so good. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Emmanuel wonderful counselor we just got through celebrating Jesus's birth we don't really know when Jesus's birth is but that's the day that we choose as Christians to celebrate it I hope you had an awesome Christmas it's going to be the New Year's before we know it we're going to be into 2022 and I hope to do some other things I want to do some online Bible studies I just want to expand what I'm doing. I've got to get myself into more of a schedule mode and more organized to do that. But I'm going to try to do that this year. So let's pray. God, we just thank you for this time that we can learn more about your word, God. And we can learn more about Jesus and what Jesus did for us, God. We thank you for Jesus that was the best gift ever, is still the best gift ever, that gives the best gift ever through salvation in him, and that is eternal life. God, we just pray that you would give us the boldness to go out and to share your truths and to share the gospel with others. God, we pray that their ears and their hearts and their minds in their uh, eyes would be open to truth. God, we just pray for anyone that comes here and their families. We pray for abundant blessing. We pray for protection and provision and guidance, God. We pray for all the things that you give, God. All the things that you do. We thank you for that. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, well, there is a certain way that I sign off. I hope you have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow. Much love, much love, and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.